Solstice by Reply Game Studios doesn't waste much time. Well, other than that long-ass interlude where the character reads you some weird story about the creation of the world and looks at some stained glass windows. After that, at least, you leap into a game that is as close to a Devil May Cry joint as you can muster. It feels like it's almost in the same diagrams and planning style. But does that hurt it? We will see. Let's check it out. If you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. And check out the Dark Tide. Two full hours talking to the lead designer of Dark Tide. We discuss new bits that he hasn't told anybody else. It's a fantastic discussion. It's an amazing podcast. I'm actually quite proud of that video. So if you guys get a chance, check that out too. The story dumps you directly into the combat after it dumps that small exposition in your lap. A battle between man and chaos has ensued, and only the Chimera, these are warriors created from the marriage of two different types of souls, can guarantee the safety of the human race. Here, Briar and Loot are sisters. Briar gets the power and Loot loses her body and augments her soul, spirit riding Briar around as they take out enemies and defend Briar from attacks by becoming the shield for her sister. They head out to fight the Wraiths who've taken over a great deal of the world, including the main city and pretty much decimated everything. Now, each section is fairly linear with you and Loot leaping around, using your Loot skills to switch her shield style from a blue astral spirit tinge, which is for shields and defense, and the ability to use platforms made of spirit spirits and otherwise, as well as a red tinge, which is the aggressive form that lets her take down enemies corrupted by chaos, as well as some barriers within the game world that require it. And it doesn't take long to learn. Pretty soon you're flipping across the edges of buildings, switching between blue spirit to land on a platform, then leap and change into red to hit a crystal seed that feeds a barrier that you can't get past to smash it. It all works pretty seamlessly to get you jumping and guessing what may be actually needed for you at any one time, whether it be in combat or platforming. Within combat, some of the creatures can be attacked when you're surrounded in loot's power, whether it be red or blue. And flying creatures here have you leaping up, switching out spirit attacks, pulling off a combo, then switching to the red style and landing on the ground, taking out an enemy infected with the actual evil power itself. It's a unique gameplay style for this game, but we have seen this red and blue switch in other titles, so most people who are familiar with it will understand what goes on here. What I did like is the camaraderie. The reason why Solstice works when it still gets bumpy and has some issues is not just the mechanisms themselves to have loot riding around on your back, but just how it all comes together. When you block or defend against enemies, you can see loot actually looking around the game world, reacting to the button press. She swings this way and that, truly worried about the physical sister, not just due to her apparently being the only flesh taxi in town, but also because they do actually love one another. Seeing her slash an enemy and freeze them so that you can swing around is awesome, and it works to really feed into the mechanism of the story. I can say that it's odd not seeing you pull off the move itself. This is something that when you have the sprightly blue Cortana looking fairy on your back and they pull off can lead to a little bit of confusion at first between what your expected feel of the game will be and what it actually is because when you hit that block button it's really not a move you're doing it's the creature above you Fighting itself, though, is pretty good. It's not always fluid. Some of the later combos you buy for Briar aren't there to celebrate or mastery of the sword, gauntlet, or the couple other weapons you get. You start with a sword that transforms into an axe, then you get other weapons, and each has a pretty different feel and definitely a different range to them, and they work against different enemies that you face. And the game does like to throw different enemy combos at you that really require you to switch everything up. Now, Loot herself, she has a major skill set. It's unique in this way and playstyle. She has four large groups of skill sets, and... As you go up in power by collecting items and fighting in the world, the power of your skill ring basically goes up, swallowing new skill levels so she can now use and buy them. And she has more than Briar does. The currency for all this is patterned to the same defensive and aggressive blue and red style crystals that you can find in the game world. So when you buy things, they're red for Briar and they're blue for loot. And while there's a little bit of complexity here, I think Solstice nails it because it's not necessarily complex. It's just that what you see is really what you get. It works. The skills will have you kick slicing an enemy into the air, comboing them, then slam into the ground with a smash that sends rocks and debris flying. And then the next moment, you're going to be parrying with the spirit on your back, freezing the enemy and leaping in to punch them, destroying their armor. Because as I said, a lot of the weapons have that little bonus tactic that's built into them. And you may need it. The game throws you against trash sometimes, but it can still be pretty hard when it comes to the harder difficulties. Very hard, in fact. And if you're in the middle of a fight, the biggest enemy you may face is unfortunately something that you can't adjust the difficulty on, and that's the camera.
that thing is pretty goddamned bad. It hurts during platforming because it's not set at an angle that really helps for 3D leaping in a lot of those sections. And in battles, you can get stuck behind, let's say, a platform or inside walls. It's not happening all the time, but it did impact a couple battles I had and shows how hard it can be to get this kind of thing right, especially in a game that really wants to deliver to you all these parts of the presentation and show you a cool city. It can be a little bit confusing, but... Talking about presentation, let's talk about the audio. All must be especially strong for you two. You must be careful, or you won't meet death, but transcendence. Losing yourself to the chaos coursing through you. Sister, a powerful aura was here. It left traces, like an echo. What was it? I can't tell, but those traces may just let us see what happened. First, these are excellent voiceovers for what it's worth. The back and forth between Loot and Briar hammering through the game world. It's actually hugely impactful to hear them talk and discuss as they move around. And you get an idea of the story directly through them. Her ethereal voice cries out in warning, for example, if you keep your powers up too long and Loot pops out of existence just for a couple seconds, leaving you without any spiritual protection, which might be just at the time new enemies are also popping in. Also, the variability here is good. The characters that you meet, there aren't that many, but each one has a distinct feel to them and adds a little bit of mystery to what's happening. Now, sound-wise, the game is actually pretty middling. 3D audio is somewhat there, but it didn't really do the best job in channeling, and that has to be done as this game has a huge number of enemies in small locations that might be floating above you. Everything will be going good and then it's and you just get beat up in the bottom of a sword blender and you can't really figure out where everybody's coming from. You really do have to adjust your different stances when it comes to that spiritual shield as well because if you switch over to blue, you can see those enemies and if you aren't switched over to blue, sometimes it can be very hard to do so. The hammers, the swords, bows, shields, and giant dudes trying to treat your head like the world's peskiest nail and hammer you down are done fine, but it does sway towards that bit of raspiness that you might expect to hear in an RPG. Musically, this isn't much for me. It's fine. It does a pretty basic job with the battle sounds for the most part, and I found myself liking just running around exploring and some of the tunes there. It was more laid back audio than the actual main battle, which is a lot of percussion and really does swing towards anime. I get that some fans of the genre are going to love this. I wasn't really in love with the music. Graphically, though, I like the presentation of this game. It can lose some FPS for sure, and there's a few options for graphics, but not a lot. Luckily, it does support DLSS if you have a compatible card. Even with the game's camera angles, I did like just the atmosphere here. The way the camera might sweep around as you run across the bridge, giving you this almost Lord of the Rings feel to everything. A sort of gloomy, kind of crooked look to the game world. Especially with monster castles shadowing everything below them and you're working through the ramparts trying to find a secret tunnel to make your way upwards. The main characters are also leaning a bit more towards JRPG in their graphics, especially in the cutscenes, which do look to be locked at 30 FPS, by the way. In one or two of the gameplay moments, I did notice something. The characters seem a little bit off when you look at the game world itself and you look at them. They seem almost to be a bit too artistically edgy compared to, again, the more brooding and dark locations. It's a bit like putting a Persona 5 character in Dark Souls. In the end, it didn't bother me. It works, and the way the game has you moving around, you're almost never in the same place for too long, and the battles can have you working enemies back and forth, killing them in wide locations, leaving you breathing room, and at other points being tight spots where you really do have to do your absolute best. And because the game is consistently raiding you, you'll probably want to if you're one of those type of people who likes to get those S tiers. And Solstice feels pretty much exactly as you would expect. There's not any huge surprises. They did a good job making sure that you knew how the gameplay was going to be and that switching between the two elements kind of stuff we've done before but adding in different weapons with their different skills and combos really does help it feel fresh almost all the way throughout a third person action slasher with a lot of love for the original genre but it does stumble a couple times let's talk about fun factor well the game has those technical issues for sure that camera can be called enemy number three i really did enjoy it the ability to work through the items that you get see the different combos then switch out weapons attack enemies with those switch in between the different spiritual stances, rocking those perfect parries if you can, and then finding a hidden area to test your might all worked really well. It's a nice, solid title when it comes to its fun factor and its presentation. It's not a bumpy road, 
It's a nice road. It's got a couple potholes in it. As you guys know, our rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again. Rating scale with rent replaced to just buy it a deep, deep sale on PC. At the price for this game, I actually think it's worth it. It is a slightly more budget title. This is enjoyable. There's a lot going on. I had no crashes. I did have a couple FPS issues, and I would love to see them sort of fix that camera because this is one of those titles where that camera is sort of stuck in a place. You have a lock-on ability if you need to use that to swing yourself around at speed. I did like the enemy types. The impact could have been a little bit better, but for this price, I actually think this is a, just a really solid, enjoyable game and a title that, hey, you know what? At this particular time might be something that you can leap into and give it a try. So if you guys like these videos, give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, come onto the Patreon. We do D&D. We do game streaming. We do discussions in an awesome place. I would love for you to join there, especially as all my videos just seem to get demonetized. Found some more of those yesterday. And you know everybody creator-wise on YouTube is. I would love for you to check out the Patreon. But if you don't want to, that's fine. You can be a member on the YouTube channel as well. You'll see more reviews, previews, and if you get a chance, check out the two-hour deep dive on Dark Tide I just did. Two full hours sitting down with Victor Magnuson. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.